All right. Hello, everybody. Um, this is going to be the first part of 12.3, which is about the dot product and projections. And there will be some light uh, physics examples in here as well um, and how that's going to tie into what we're doing here. All right. So first, um, just some basic properties. Um, a scalar. or just a number, right? A scalar is just a number. And a vector can be combined by multiplication. So let's say k is a scalar and v is a vector. Okay. Let's define that. So k is a scalar, just a constant. And let's say v equals uh, let's go v1, v2 for the components. And hopefully you've seen this a little bit already, so this shouldn't be too bad, but um, all you're going to do is if you have a constant multiplied with a vector, it just increases all the components by that factor. And so you just straight up multiply k with v1 and with v2, whatever those are. Now, if you got two vectors... All right, then you can combine those. It's not really multiplication anymore, but the only thing that you can do with them, well, there's really two things. Today we'll talk about the dot product. Okay, and so what that looks like is, let's say if you, let me use different letters. If A is, let's say, A1 and A2, and B, vector B, is component um, has components b1 and b2. Oops. Sorry, writing on this iPad still a little rough for me. So, uh, so if you have these two vectors defined as as so, the dot product is then written like this, you have a, you just write a dot right next uh, in between, uh, a dot b, like that. And the definition for it is to simply multiply the components, the corresponding components, basically. So if you think of the first components or the x components for each one, you would take a1 and multiply that with b1. Oop, take that back. It's not going to be a vector anymore. Uh, so anyway, you take a1 and b1, you multiply those together, and then you add that with a2 and b2, and that is the dot product. The dot product gives you a scalar result, okay? So if you do uh, a vector dotted with another vector, you get a scalar now. It's no longer a vector, okay? And that's the definition for it. And so here's the first example. Uh, so let's say we have u equal to uh, a vector with components 2, negative 2, and 3. And let's say v has components 1, 4, and negative 3. Okay, so let's do a couple of things real quick. So what I'd like for you to do is to take, uh, find two things, u dot v. So what's that going to look like? And also, let's go ahead and take u dot v, whatever that is, and let's go ahead and multiply that with u. So what I'd like for you to do is pause the video real quick, try these out, and make sure you get the right answers. All right. So to do the dot product here, you're going to take x components, y components, let me use a different color, and z components, and you're going to multiply those together and add them up. That's all a dot product is. So 2 times 1 is 2, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, 
combine that, you get negative 15. So that should be the answer for A. And so now here, we're just taking whatever u dot v is, which was negative 15, and we're multiplying that with u. And so that is going to be negative 15 times u, which is 2, negative 2, 3. And so all that happens is each component gets multiplied by negative 15. So your final answer is negative 30, 30, and negative 45. Okay, so hopefully you got those right. Moving on. Let's go to properties. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to prove all these, but trying to prove these on your own is actually a very good exercise. Uh, the basic premise here, you can define u as u1, u2, v as v1, v2, and then just use those definitions to prove these. And, it, and it's, pretty, it's just algebraic, so it's pretty straightforward. But um, here's what you should know. So first property, if you take a vector u and dot it with a vector v, it commutes. It's commutative, meaning that the order in which you dot the vectors doesn't matter. And that should make sense from the multiplication that uh, is used to arrive at the answer. Okay. Now, if you have u dotted with two other vectors, let's say v plus w, then the dot product does distribute like you think it would. So it's going to become u dot v plus u dot w. All right, and now uh, let's say you have a scalar times a dot product. Okay, in this case, you can decide which of the two vectors you choose to uh, multiply by k first. So whether you do ku and then dot it with v, that will be uh, one and the same as if you were to do u dotted with kv. So just like normal multiplication, same idea. Uh, the second one, let's say you take any vector, or I'm sorry, not the second one, the next one, let's say you take any vector v and dot it by, uh, with itself, Okay, then that's going to be a scalar, of course. And what it ends up being is simply the magnitude of the original vector squared. Okay, Now, an alternate um, way to write this, if you were to square root both sides, okay, you could also say that uh, the magnitude of v is just the square root of the dot product of v with v. Okay, so sometimes it's useful to write out um, or to use this version of the property, but it all means the same thing. All right, and the next, the last one is if you have a zero vector, which I don't know if we've defined yet or not, but a zero vector is just a vector with zero for all the components. Okay, so that's that's what we're talking about. It's not hard to see that if you have a zero vector dotted with any vector v, that now you get a scalar result, a constant of zero. All right? So a little bit of an introduction to dot product and how the properties work as far as like algebraic properties. Now let's talk about some different things that we can do with this. And I'm going to go ahead and just use a new page here. All right. So let's look specifically at the angle between vectors. Oop. So let's say we have a vector u. something like that. And let's say here we have a vector v. So how the question is going to be, how do we find the angle between these two vectors? Let's call it theta. OK, 
Okay, and so what we're going to do is go ahead and make a triangle out of this. So I'm going to draw in, uh, let me use a different color. So let's say we have our third vector there. How would I describe that? Well, if you were to take V and subtract U, you would get a copy of this green vector. And if you don't, if you don't believe me, okay, try it yourself. So here's V. I'm trying to draw it about the same direction and length. And now minus U means that I'm going to take U, flip it around, and so now, so essentially this is minus U, right? If I do that over here, so here's negative U, then the argument here is that this vector, may not look like it on my iPad, but this vector and this one over here are the same thing, all right? So if you buy that, Here's how we can find the angle. Oops. So when we have a non-right triangle and we have three sides labeled, usually the law of cosines is, is a good uh, thing to start with. So if I use the law of cosines, we're going to take the length opposite the angle, so that would be the length of v minus u. And that squared is going to be the two lengths that are uh, adjacent to this angle, or to the, that make this angle. So that would be the length of v. You square that, you add it with the length of u. And then you subtract uh, 2 times the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of theta. That's just the law of cosines. All right. So now how does this help us find the angle? Well, let's see if we can simplify this a bit and get a nice compact formula. Um, we saw earlier that the magnitude uh, right here, the magnitude, whoops, wrong button, sorry. The magnitude of a vector squared is just the dot product of that vector with itself. And so this part right here, I could rewrite as the dot product of v minus u dotted with itself, v minus u. So now what does that look like? Well, if I actually wrote out the components, or not, sorry, if I actually used the dot product to distribute these vectors, um, pretty much like the distributive property or FOIL, if you will, just carry the dot instead of multiplication with it. So you would do v dot v plus, take that back, minus u dot v. And then right here, we're going to get the same exact thing. So that's actually going to be two of these, right? So we're going to have v dot v minus 2u dot v plus u dot u. If you're familiar with the squaring about a binomial formula, it's pretty much the same thing. You just use a dot product in the place of multiplication. All right, and so using the same property we used earlier, I see a dot product of a vector with itself. I know that that's going to be the magnitude squared. This I'm going to keep. And then same thing here, magnitude of u squared. Okay, now let's take a look. So we know that this is supposed to equal that, right? So let me write that out. All right, so if these are equal, then we can cancel some things out. All right, magnitude of v squared drops out. The magnitude of u squared drops out. 
and now we're left with negative 2 u dot v, and then that's going to equal negative 2 u, uh, magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta. You can cross out and cancel the negative 2's out, and so now we get a nice compact formula, an alternate version for the dot product, which is u dot v equal to u dot v cosine theta. So this is a very convenient formula to be comfortable with. And now if you're specifically finding angles, okay, of course you can rework this formula and get cosine of theta by itself. And so the cosine of the angle, which is, I mean, we don't necessarily want the cosine, we might just want the angle itself. But what you can use, use uh, what you can do is use this formula. Cosine of theta is going to be uh, the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of each. The product of the magnitude of each. Okay, and so here are nice two nice formulas that are convenient to use depending on what you're looking for. All right. So another quick example. Go ahead and once I set it up for you guys, pause it, try it first, and then let's see if we're on the same page. All right, let's say we have, uh, let's say we want to find the angle between the vectors u equal to 3i plus j plus 2k so find the angle between that vector and let's do two of them this one negative 4i plus 2k and also uh, i plus j minus 2k. So go ahead and pause it, try that real quick, and let's see what happens. All right, so for part a, okay, since we're looking for the angle between uh, u and then whatever this one is, I'm just going to use the second version of the formula. <clears throat> so I'm going to go cosine theta it's going to be the dot product of this vector and this one. Remember, all we're doing is taking the, mul um, the components that correspond, multiply those out, and then add everything up. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 1 times 0, there's no j term for the second one. That's going to be 0. And then the third component, you just take 2 times 2, which is 4. And now, for the bottom, you find the length of each vector. And if you recall from, last, from the last section, uh, to find the length of any vector, you just square all the components, add them up, and take the square root. So for u, it'll be 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1. Come on. So you got 9 plus 1. And then 2 squared is going to be 4. And then for the second one, uh, 16 and 4. And so I have the cosine of theta is going to equal uh, negative 8 over the square root of 14 and the square root of 20. And you know what? You can ultimately just leave it this way. Who cares about simplifying this? You can now use your calculator, right? You do the inverse cosine so you do the inverse cosine of both sides to get theta by itself. And when you type in the right-hand side and do the inverse cosine of that, um, depending on what mode you're in, you should get an answer of 118.6 degrees or so. Let's approximate that. Or uh, in radians, I think it's about 2.07. So 
So that should be the answer for A. For B, in the interest of time, you set it up the same exact way as A, and your answer should be 0 for the cosine. And so then when you, you don't need the calculator for this, when you find the angle that has a cosine of 0, that's going to be pi over 2. Okay. So what does that tell us? Well, this implies a few different things. Notice in the first case we had a negative uh, cosine value. Notice that we got an, an obtuse angle here. For the second example, we had a zero cosine value, which gave us exactly a 90 degree or pi over 2 angle. And now the last case, which we didn't do, but you can certainly um, figure that out, is if the cosine is greater than zero, we're just going to have an acute angle. And so let's summarize that. So the sine of the dot product So if a dot product is negative, you know you're going to have an obtuse angle, right? So if the cosine ends up being negative, we know theta is obtuse. If the cosine of theta is 0, then we know that theta is 90 degrees. Okay, And if the cosine of theta is greater than 0, and this is the example we didn't do, but not hard to see that that's just going to be an acute angle. Okay. So now here's some terminology that you should kind of get comfortable with. This angle in, in particular is very important to us but there's a lot of ways that we can describe a 90 degree angle in the context of what kind of objects we're looking at. Um, if we have two lines or if we have two planes, we use the word perpendicular. Anytime we have a right angle, okay? If we have um, vectors, when we say vectors are perpendicular, we actually say typically the context, uh, in that context, we say orthogonal. Okay? And if we have a vector and a plane, usually we use the word normal. Okay. So a vector that is normal to a plane has a makes a 90 degree angle with, with the plane. That's what that means. Okay, almost done with this first part of the notes. Uh, let's talk quickly about direction angles. So this will be the first two direction angles are pretty easy to talk about. Um, so let's say we just have two dimensions, okay, and let's say we have a vector right here, V, then we have two angles that we look at. So alpha is always going to be the angle between the given vector and the x-axis. Beta is always going to be the angle between the given vector and the y-axis. Okay. Now, to help us figure this out, it is useful to think about uh, let's use purple. Instead of x-axis, think of the simplest vector 
that is along the x-axis, which would be the i vector, right? A unit vector in the x direction is just i. Do the same over here. Let's call that j. And now you can find these direction angles using the formulas that we uh, talked about earlier. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. So for example, the cosine of alpha, oops, should in theory be the dot product of v with a vector in the um, x direction, and we've discussed that i is the easiest, the, the easiest vector to use. And then if we're just using the formula from, uh, from above, right here, the cosine formula for the dot product, you can say that the cosine of alpha is v dot i divided by the magnitude of v times the magnitude of i, times the cosine, or I'm sorry, I already have that written down. Um, so how do I figure that out? <clears throat> well. Remember that you can think of v as v1, v2. i is just 1, 0 since it's a unit vector in the x direction. So all that's going to be left in the numerator is v1. And magnet, whoops, sorry, back in the old notation. And divide that by the magnitude of v. Now this the magnitude of i, right, it's a unit vector, so this is just equal to 1, so it just kind of disappears. All right, so the cosine of alpha is just uh, the first component divided by the length of the vector. The cosine of beta, similarly, if you take v dotted with j all over magnitude v times magnitude j, then you're going to get uh, v2 over the magnitude of v. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and talk about a three-dimensional vector. Okay, So it's kind of hard to draw in here, and if we need a visual uh, when we meet, I can kind of uh, show you on video. But So let's say we have our x, y, z uh, coordinate system. And here's i, here's j, and now we have k thrown in the mix. And let's say we have a vector that, you know, maybe you gotta go this way, that way, and then, whoops, let me make that a little straighter. So let's say we have a vector starting at the origin that meets this point that's sitting out in space right here. Okay, so alpha is still going to be the same angle that it was before. It's that angle between the vector and the x-axis. So it's kind of hard to draw, but I'll try. So that would be this angle here. Okay. It's kind of in between, it's on its own plane, right? It's not on the xz plane or the xy plane. Um, it's in between planes, and this would be alpha. And then this angle right here between v and y, that would be beta. And lastly, this is the one we need to talk about, the angle in between the z-axis, the positive z-axis, or k if you will, that's going to be gamma. Okay? And so if I add into the mix if I do v dotted with k, so now I have a, let's assume I have a third component, so v1, v2, v3, and then k would now be 0, 0, 1, right? When you take that dot product and then divide it by the magnitude of each, you're going to get v3 divided by the magnitude of v. Oops. OK? 
Okay? And this is what we call the direction cosines. So this right here, whoops. This, the fact that cosine of beta equals V2 over the magnitude of V, and then cosine of gamma is equal to V3 over the magnitude of V, those are called the direction cosines. So if you're ever asked to find the direction cosines, all you do is find the cosine. That's it. You're not looking for the angle. You're just finding the cosine between two vectors. Okay? Now, an interesting note, the uh, normalized, so you should already have had some practice, you know, finding unit vectors, and that's called normalizing, right? Well, when you do that, <coughs> the normalized version of any vector v equal to v1, v2, v3, right? If you go ahead and uh, find the length of v and then divide every component by that, you get exactly v1 over the magnitude of v, v2 over the magnitude of v, and v3 over the magnitude of v. And these are the direction cosines right here. So if you happen to be working with a, uh, a vector and you have it uh, in its unit vector form, you've normalized it already, you have the direction cosines right in front of you. Okay? They're just the components of the unit vector, which is pretty cool. And last example that we'll talk about today, I'll set up for you, would be just to find the direction angles Oh, sorry, find the direction cosines and approximate the actual direction angles. So go ahead and find alpha, beta, and gamma uh, to the nearest degree. Sorry, I'm writing pretty quick because my class starts in 10 minutes and I want to get this done. Um, all right, so there we are. Find the direction cosines and approximate the direction angles to the nearest degree. And let's say the vector is uh, 2i plus 3j plus 4k. All right, and for this one, pause it, try it. We're looking for cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, cosine of gamma, and then go ahead and find the three angles themselves. Try it out, see what you get, and then come on back. All right, so here should be the answers. I'm not going to go through the entire problem. I'm just going to tell you the answers. So you can check it, and if you didn't get these right, figure out what you did wrong, and if you can't, we'll go over it. Uh, the, cos the direction cosine should be 2 over root 29, 3 over root 29, and the cosine of gamma is 4 over the root of 29. And so using these should give you an approximation of 68 degrees, 56 degrees, and 42 degrees. Okay, so this is a pretty heavy section. We've gotten a significant amount of it done now, so we'll pick up with this in class tomorrow. All right, see you guys tomorrow.